Welcome back, fishing freaks. Been a while since we've done a rolling truck intro. I'm heading after stripers today. And I've seen some of you on the Catch and Cooks ask for OSG's cheesy grits recipe. So the idea today, we're gonna get some stripers, we're gonna bring them home, I'm gonna show you how to cook them, and then we're gonna put them in the grits. It's gonna be delicious. So let's look at the ceiling. We're about 20 minutes away from the lake right now. Sun is just coming up. I can't get there fast enough. I'm hoping they're blowing up on top water. Get that two step out there. Click, 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 click. Pow! Get busted by some stripers. That'll be so much fun. But if they're not on top water, we're going to go after them with spoons and swim baits. Well, fishing freaks, I've never encountered this before. But the only way to get into this boat ramp is to use a credit card machine. And it is just declining. And the guy in front of me said it was doing the same thing. So, this is no Taco Bueno. Oh no. And our reverse is locked up right now. This is really not good. This is really not what you want to have to start the day. Oh my gosh. My brakes are locked up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get up this hill. Well, we got untangled. Thank goodness, I had a little reverse safety pin and I had some some wood wood blocks. I was able to chalk my tires and get it in there back up, but this is gonna back us up about 30 minutes to the next boat ramp. That stinks, but we're gonna keep trucking. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. We in the water right now. It's been a grind, it's, it was like an hour from the first ramp to get to here now anyway we're past all that got about half a tank of gas merch ready to fly let's go find him yeah buddy Right there. Oh man, they're moving fast. Oh, here's a school. Oh my gosh. Oh, come on. Eat that thing. This could be white bass, I don't know. Some of them look pretty good size. Little stripers. Quit fighting me. All right, there's definitely some fish over here. Some bigger ones sitting down closer to the channel. See the top water, they're smacking at it, but just look at the graph. A lot that's a lot of little ones i don't know this is still still happening right now guys but we missed the main entree i think i'm gonna move guys i think i'm probably missing it somewhere we got bait we got small stripers but i want a couple of big ones I got up on pad I just saw another school coming up there's bird there's birds diving there's fish busted right here all right let's see if we can get one right here they are popping up right now holy cow Woo. oh yeah that's little buddies Things are everywhere. 
think I might be in the nursery. Hang on a minute, guys. I just hooked up on the flutter spoon on a bigger one. There's some bigger ones down here, closer to the bottom. Just gotta get down there to them. Oh, there's one. A little better. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a good keeper. There we go. God, I was just, I was burning it up. Woof. There we go now. There's a lively one. Woof. All right, there's our dinner. It's a decent sized one. All right. Slurping spoon. Okay, yeah, there's, there's some better ones. I'm just going to absolutely have to rip this thing. This is a three quarter ounce. I would almost prefer a one right here. It can't be slow. Oh, God, he crushed it. There we go, baby. Oh yeah, pull that drag, there you go. Good one. Oh, he's barely hooked. <laughs> Come here, boat flip you, there we go. All right, figuring it out. Put her on her green rod here. Yeah, that one's almost 22. Okay, so in order to catch these fish, I'm having to basically burn it. So doing like your standard, you know, up and down, you know, a couple feet up technique. Uh-oh. They need it fast. Huge pops. Huge pops. Like normally for white bass, you know, I'm I'm right here, a couple feet. They need it big pops. Oh, they're at the bottom right now. These are catchables. Come on. Oh my God. You just load up and it's just solid. Ah. Come here, baby. Oh God, this is a big one. Oh, shoot. Oh, guys. Getting into some hammers here. <laughs> Woo! That one's that one's big. I almost think I need the net for that one. Come here. There you are. There you are, big stripey. Woo! That one is for sure over 20. Oh, so fun to catch guys. That one is going to fillet up really nice. There we go now. All right guys, so we, we have our limit of big ones. So just to let you know, I'm on a, a lake called Lake Texoma. Uh, this used to be my favorite lake in Texas when I was growing up. I caught my first smallmouth probably two miles from this point right here. Had some friends that had uh, had some campers up here on the lake. I used to come up here and fish a lot. And the striper has always been good. That's like a staple. We've got uh, naturally reproducing stripers. The salinity is good enough where they can uh, reproduce and they, they do a good job stocking it as well. To manage it, they're making sure that, especially right now, that you're not taking home a bunch of big ones. You want those big ones to survive so you can only keep two over 20 inches on this lake specifically, but you also can't cull any. I mean, once you catch a big striper, unless you release them right away like I just did, it's, it's really tough on them. I've got the live all running full, everything's wide open. And you know, two, two of them are doing okay. One of them's already kind of up. So I've got an 18 incher and then I've got two uh, over 20 and I can keep 10. What they want right now is something really fast. So I'm throwing a three quarter ounce slurping spoon. It's a, a lead 
jigging spoon and it just does this right here great for summer great for when you got schooling fish in the fall winter time vertical jigging and then when they see it coming just as fast as you can reel then they'll pop just smack it and it stops it like a freight train so fun Ooh, love it so much just have to reel it up super fast And then rip it. Oh. oh yeah, this is another big one. Oh yeah, baby. Rip and drag. We are probably not gonna be able to keep this one. Because it's too big. You can only keep a couple over. Oh my gosh, this is giant. Flyers ready. I'm gonna try to release this guy as fast as possible. Oh my gosh, just hammers. All right, spoons out, spoons out. I'm gonna let this guy go. There we go, I wanna see those big ones live. Don't even like handle them when it's, it's gonna be 106 today, it's tough on them. What would really be fun though, is if those big ones would decide to just come up to the top. But a lot of these fish are not really on the bottom. Striper just, they move a ton, you know, they might, they might move 20 feet up and down as they're swimming side to side. So there's a school off to my right. You can see them, they're, they're kind of mid depth. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh, I can't even move that one. Oh. oh gosh, it's big, it's big and I love it. <sighs> Not even a giant, it's just so strong. Woo. Yeah, you're fun and beautiful. Catch you up. You unhooked. Don't even want to take them out of the water right now, guys. All right, spoons out. Nice stripey. Let them go. Oh god, I had them on. There we go. Oh god, he wants to jump. There he goes. Oh, what a show. Ah, oh, man, guys, they're big. They're big. Yeah, come over here to this side. I'll net you up. Take care of you, buddy. These are all over. Ah. Oh. drum with a giant striker chasing it. Oh my gosh. This is what those giant stripers are down there chasing, guys. Big old gizzy. I thought I had a drum. It's just a big gizzy. And I had a huge striper chase that up. Maybe right here in the nose. 
drop him down, see what happens. He wants it so bad. The striper is the striper's on it right now. Come on, he's trying to figure out how to eat it. See him, he's swimming all the way up to the surface. He's freaked out. Oh gosh, oh gosh, we got one. We got him, we got him, we got him. He's taking it. He's taking it. Let him eat. All right, let's see if we can hook this thing, guys. We got him. We got him. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We got him on the big shad. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a good one. Oh, yeah. He's running. Probably going to need the net again, which I already put away. Woo. Oh, come here, dude. Uh. Oh, God, that's a giant. That's a big one. Come here. Oh, guys, look at that one. The spoon that got the gizzard that got the striper. That's a freaking big one. Whew. Come here, buddy. All right. Get this guy right back in the water. Woo, what a fish, man. That was sweet. See you, my guy. Get back down there. That was sick. So cool. Oh, man, there's a school right below me. Okay, here we go again. Ball of shad right here. Striper kind of on the outside. I would not mind hooking another one. big live gizzard. That was fun. Oh, I think I got another one. I do. All right, boys, let's try this again. Yes, yeah, sir. There we go. Ready to deploy. He's coming up. He's getting chased up. Oh, big one's on him. Big one's on him. Look at that. Oh my gosh, guys. They're right there at the surface chasing him. Oh, oh, he just got hit. Oh, oh, I think they got him. I think he got him. No, he got thumped. Oh my gosh, he's getting chased up. Look at him. Oh, he's freaking out. He's running up to the surface. I would be too. Oh, one sees him. One sees him. He's coming. He's coming. How are you not eating that? Oh, 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 we just got bit. He just got bit. Come on, baby. Looks like he got him. Nope, he's still getting chased. Oh, they're they're whacking him. I can feel him just thumping. They're thumping him right now. Oh yeah, he just got tugged. Just need a big one to eat him. Oh, he got cleaned. He got cleaned off. Ah, oh, that was sick, guys. That was sick. Well, we lost that last one and the bite is going cold. I'm una unable to hook any more live bait, but we have more than enough to do our catch and cook. That was still alive. A couple of bigs, and now we are going to take it to the kitchen. We're gonna clean these up, and I'm gonna show you guys how OSG, OSG is gonna show you how to make those cheesy grits. We do catfish a lot, but these meteor fish, like these stripers, I've been wanting to do this recipe with them. It's gonna be amazing. So stay tuned, let's head to the kitchen.
Wabam. How do we clean, clean one of these good sized stripers like this? They are gonna have some red meat, just to let you know. It's gonna be a little different, and they do have some extra bones in there that usually you'll find. You'll definitely find them with your teeth, and um, you can cut them out if you want to. Always remember, kind of angle your fish, or angle your knife up towards the head of the fish there. If you go straight down at the gills, you're gonna miss some of this really good thick meat. This is the thickest part of most all fish that I fillet. So if you don't angle your knife up there, you're gonna miss that really good chunk. So angle it up. I usually flip my fish around and go from this direction and I'll start working down that spine. All right, so then you're just attached to the ribs. We'll get that off of there. Cut that rib cage out. I'm gonna cut any little section of uh, pin bones and things out of here. I try to take my time since I'm feeding these to the family. I wanna make sure that they, they like them and they wanna eat them again. Make it a good, clean piece of meat. Do it like I was cooking it in a restaurant. So I'm gonna take my, my catfish pliers. Started doing it this way now, just Play it, the whole skin off. Pliers work amazing. Now I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna cut down the center of this, this bloodline. I'm gonna pull a section of this out. Pull that whole little section out of there. I like to take my spray hose. And I'll spray the fillets off with high pressure, and that will sort of rip any little scales or um, little fin connective muscles. It'll kind of rip those off. This is a long piece, so we'll cut it in half. It's also important you want to make sure your uh, your pieces are about the same size when you're cooking them together. Uh, especially baking or something like that, so they all come out similar. But this right here, my friends, this is what is gonna go on top of those grits and it is going to be, oh, that can almost be sashimi right there. It's beautiful. Hi. Hi. Yeah. High five for stripers today. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Yeah. In the kitchen with OSG yeah. and family. <laughs> Today, yeah, we need full details. Looks okay. like you've already laid out ingredients. Uh, our fish has been processed. I'm just uh, draining the fish on a little drying rack. Fish is in this bowl, so trying to trying to get some of that moisture out of there. So yeah. this is the grit making stuff. Normally, disclaimer: we use yellow corn grits, but we have the white corn. Uh, we have fresh okra from the garden, that's gonna be included in there as well. We got a little butter, some milk, and I am going to take care of the fish. Got some Cajun seasoning here. This is for blackening. We're gonna dump this in our little shallow pan, container, smoked paprika. That's going in. And we'll go ahead and we'll do four of these fillets. First step, sauteing the okra and little onions. Is that what's in there? Yes. Normally I do garlic. I don't have any garlic, so I use some green onions. Fresh okras that we nourished ourselves. Yes. But once it gets hot with the oil, then you're gonna add your milk. And I never measure, but you basically just wanna add enough to where it looks like a soup, and then it'll boil down, condense, get thicker. I'm coming. Stir. I'm coming over there, guys. Just hang on a second. Hold it with that milk. I'm flopping fish in here. Okay. Coming so over you, here. You add about, I would say, a cup each time. 
just enough to where it's like covered on top and then you just kind of constantly stir it you want it to be kind of simmering a little bit so cup of grits every so often oh no, how much of this did you add probably only half a cup to three fourths of a cup a little goes a long way okay and then you just kind of keep stirring it and then once it gets sticky which we'll show you in a minute once it starts sticking to the bottom and it gets thick then you add another cup of milk it's a process it's a process okay so it's starting to get a really good consistency you still don't want to add another cup of milk yet because there's still a lot of milk that it needs to absorb so you just keep stirring just keep stirring you're just gonna stand here and you've also added a little bit of red um crushed red pepper flakes which really kicks it up a notch I would not recommend that unless you really like spice. Black pepper, a little bit of salt. You can keep it basic because a lot of your flavor is coming from the Cajun seasoning right here. So it's a nice balance. So you lay the fish on top of the grits and then you get that delicious buttery flavor mixed with the Cajun seasoning. Oh my. Don't really measure, I just wait until it's kind of completely covered. Okay, oh, all right, I see what you're saying. The milk, it, it like, covers the island. Yeah, there you go. It covers the island in covers simple terms. <laughs> How long does it cook until it's like soft? This whole process, probably about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. And it's probably about time for me to get on the, uh, the blackening, so let's get on that. Good gob of butter. Medium, medium high. Oven's getting preheated to 375 right now. You guys need to get yourselves a cast iron, no matter what, I mean, because you gotta have a camping and all that stuff. Or you can get a good quality stainless. Definitely don't have any kind of rubberized or plastic handles, so, because you're going to put this in the oven. Yeah, buddy. Okay, the last step of the grits is I just dumped a whole bunch of uh, cheese. I do a Mexican style blend, then shredded, probably about a cup, and mix it into your grits after the consistency is kind of where you want it. We got a nice crust on the fish. I'm doing two minutes each side, medium high. All right, timer's going off, into the oven it goes. Watch your knees. Bam, I'm gonna go 10 minutes. I feel good about that. That's gonna be delish. Come to hot. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I did that. I done did that today. I went out there and caught that for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I got up early. I went to two daggone boat ramps. Had bark break on the trailer, you know. I mean, I had to get out there and grind now. And now look what you got right there. Okay, okay, just like. Folks at home, those look awesome. Notice the the flaking. That's usually how you, how you can tell the fish is done. So we've got a nice muscle tissue starting to, uh, to separate there. Be very careful when you go to grab your pan out of the oven. Make sure you've got a mitt or a towel or something. Because Maybe you shouldn't be using that towel. That thing is going to be a blazing hunt. Now, I am just, I'm, a, I'm like a little perturbed that the red pepper flakes are in there. You told me this. Okay, first of all, I know, folks, I hold on, hold on. Let me just say this. Last time I made the grits and you went to go taste it, you go, hmm, it tastes kind of bland. So I kicked it up a notch. So. Well, I Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Did we have blackened fish with that? Yes. Right. The reason I make Listen. grits, I only All make right. it with Listen. fish. Listen. <laughs> okay. You do. You want them to be a little bland. Cheese is nice. Yeah, well, there's plenty of cheese in there. Cheese is nice because when you get that Cajun flavor on there, it's it's gonna pop. Mm -hmm. now make up your mind. Another way you can serve this, if you don't want to do the grits, y'all, because it is kind of a lengthy process. That's how I like it. But if you wanna go with a sandwich, doing like a po' boy style, some tomato, lettuce, a good mayonnaise on there, maybe some oh, potato bread or Hawaiian me. bun, something like that would be amazing with that. It'll offset the spice. That's another option for you, but let's try it on top of the grits. Time to plate up. All right, come on with me. 
This is the OSG style. You probably won't, won't like this, but I want Wait. a little bit, bed of lettuce here, okay? Okay, oh, she's throwing a little shishito in there. No. And she's busting out the ranch to cool down those red pepper flakes That's you put in. About. I'm gonna show you how Southern Boy presents it. All right. Uh, in the South, there's a dish called shrimp and grits. So we're basically just replacing the shrimp with some fish. Um, I think I'm actually gonna go with a tailpiece. I wanna see what that's about. Steph said the fish was excellent. All right, we get our fork, we come in here, we break apart. Oh my goodness, y'all. Just look at that. So you break that apart, the fish is flaky, and then you get yourself some grits on the bite. You get grits on the bite all together, and that is, oh, melt in your mouth, delicious flavor blend. are not bad. The cheese is mellowing out the spice. I like that. The fish is cooked perfectly. It's excellent. I want to go catch more of those. They're amazing. There's just not many fish in fresh water that have that thick of meat for you to do these bakings and uh, these blackenings where you know, it's a good mix of, of flavoring on there. And so a, a nice striper is just perfect for doing this. A big catfish, a striper, you do try to do this with a crappie and it's just so thin. You just can't, can't really do it with that. Try this recipe guys, you will not be disappointed. Leftovers Pack your little lunch for tomorrow. Box for lunch tomorrow. Get you a filet, some shishito peppers, some cheesy grits. Good to go. That's two more meals. And I got even more. I'm gonna vacuum seal. Great day, y'all. Great day. Had a little trouble in the beginning, but it worked out good. And anytime I can bring home fish, cook it with Stephanie, and we enjoy a meal together, or the whole family for that matter, it is uh it's always satisfying. And she loves fish. She loves fish. She loves when I bring home fresh fish like that. Those striper, they fought so hard. It was just, it was a lot of fun. If you are going to go do that, make sure that you release the fish quickly if you're not going to keep them because they do struggle this time of year. Spoons, I would tell you to go get some at GuggenSquad.com. They're not available yet. Uh, that slurping, that was the jam. We do have a similar bait that is available now and that is the rip. Uh, which I prefer for vertical jigging in the colder months, but you can throw it on schooling fish like those ones that were coming up top early. You can just reel it right through there or they'll crush this thing. If you are going to order anything from GoodingSquad.com, make sure to use my code LFG so you can save at checkout. And thank you all for hanging with me on the water for another outdoor adventure today. I got the camper here. It's time. It's time to get prepping. We're, we're thinking about deer hunting, we're thinking about camping. I got some ideas to fix this thing up, so you guys stay tuned for the videos, and I'll see you on another.